Proximal hamstring tendinopathy presents as pain on the top portion of the hamstring where it attaches onto the pelvis. It's typically worse with activities that require some sort of hip flexion, so things like squats, lunges, running, going up and down stairs, and sitting are all typically provocative for proximal hamstring tendinopathy. In this video, we'll go over some of the exercise options that can be helpful for proximal hamstring tendinopathy. First, let's talk about the structure of a rehab program for proximal hamstring tendinopathy. It's typically divided into four different stages. We have isometric loading, early isotonic loading, late isotonic loading, and then plyometric exercises. And then with each one of those stages, we have various exercises, typically some that emphasize a little bit more loading at the hip, while others load a little bit more at the knee, and that really just depends on the tolerance to load. And it's important to know that with all of these exercises, not every stage nor every exercise is required in the rehab program for proximal hamstring tendinopathy. Instead, the goal is to find the most challenging exercise that we can tolerate and then gradually build up from there until we can do whatever it is that we want to do. When looking at whether an exercise is tolerated and when to progress to another exercise, there's typically a couple different guidelines that we follow. One is that pain with the exercise is okay as long as it's tolerable. So generally that's below a five out of 10, but that obviously depends on the individual. With that being said, we don't want the pain to remain elevated 24 hours after the exercise because that typically means that we did a little bit too much. And then finally, we don't want the pain to interfere with normal activities, especially sleep. So if we notice that after we do the exercises that we're having difficulty walking around comfortably or we're just not getting as much sleep because of the pain, then we also know that we should probably back off the exercises a little bit because again, they were probably a little bit too much. The first stage of rehab is isometric loading. An isometric contraction is when the muscle contracts, but there's limited movement at the joint. These are typically used when the tendon is quite irritated and not tolerating much load. And so the goal with isometric loading is that we're trying to load the tendon with something that it can tolerate without causing too much irritation. If the tendon is able to tolerate just a nice isometric contraction, then we can progress to some isotonic loading instead. For the first exercise, we can perform a prone leg curl, which is going to load more at the knee versus at the hip. So if moving at the hip causes too much irritation, this is a great exercise to start with. Ideally, when we're performing isometric exercises, we want to hold them for 30 to 45 seconds and then repeat for 3 to 5 repetitions. When looking at the load to use, we want to load them as heavy as possible, so usually somewhere between 50 to 75% of our max is what we're looking to aim to load with. Then we can progress to a long lever bridge, which is going to load more at the hip. We can either have our feet on the ground or elevated on a chair to increase the range of motion at the hip, and again, we want to hold these for 30 to 45 seconds. The closer our feet are towards us, the more we'll load the glute versus the further away our feet are, the more we'll load the hamstring so we can change the difficulty of this exercise. We can also progress to a single leg variation, which is going to load one side, repeating everything the same where we're pushing our heel down to lift the hip up, holding for 30 to 45 seconds. Isotonic loading is what we normally think of when we think about strengthening exercises. When the muscles contract, there's movement at the joint. The hamstrings cross both the knee and the hip, so we can work both hip extension as well as knee flexion. The goal of early isotonics is that we're trying to build up tolerance to movement as well as loading the hamstring muscles and tendon. For isotonic exercise, we can start with the prone leg curl again. Because we're moving at the knee and keeping the hip in neutral, this is typically a well-tolerated exercise. For isotonic exercises, we want to perform the muscle contraction slowly so that way the tendon has time to adapt to the load. So the entire contraction is over 6 to 8 seconds. So it's a 3 to 4 second muscle contraction for the concentric and then 3 to 4 seconds for the eccentric muscle contraction. Typically, we're aiming to perform 3 sets of 10 to 15 repetitions depending on what our tolerance to load is. Then we can progress to the long lever bridge. This time we want to have our feet elevated on a chair, so that way we can bring the hip through a larger range of motion. Again, we want to perform these slowly, and a lot of times it's actually helpful to use a metronome app, so that way we can have a good sense of three to four seconds up as we lift the hips up off the ground, and then three to four seconds back down to the ground. And then just like we did for the isometric exercises, we can progress these to a single leg long lever bridge, which is obviously going to be much more challenging because we're just isolating the one leg. Remember that we can change how much knee flexion we have. So the more that we bend our knee and bring our heel towards us, the more glute activation we'll get, which will make it a little bit easier on the proximal hamstring tendon. 
Whereas as we move the heel out further away from us and extend the knee, it'll make it more challenging on the hip and the proximal hamstring. Another exercise that we can do is a single leg kickback, which is going to work hip extension and that proximal hamstring tendon. We have a little bit more flexibility with this exercise because we can change the amount of resistance for the band. And so that way we can scale this a little bit easier to whatever we can tolerate. But again, we wanna perform each muscle contraction nice and slow. So the entire movement is over six to eight seconds. And we're trying to keep the upper body still and just move at the hip. So we're really focused on that hip extension with this exercise. For late stage isotonic loading, we're looking at adding more weight as well as the complexity of the movement. So we're not just isolating either the hip or the knee, but trying to integrate it into some more complex movements. The first exercise here is a banded pull through. We can use an exercise band anchored behind us, or we can also use a cable machine for the resistance. And what we want to focus on here is moving through the hips. So we want to push our hips back and then fully extend at the top of the position. So this way we're loading that hip through flexion and extension. The banded pull through can be progressed to a deadlift, either using a kettlebell or a barbell to increase the load of the exercise. This is a great exercise because we're working into hip flexion, so we're building up tolerance to that position. We want to try to keep our spine relatively still, again focused on hinging at the hips, so pushing the hips back as we lower the weight and then fully extending at the top. The next exercise is called the diver and it's a single leg exercise so we're going to be working on balance as well as building strength. Standing on the leg with a slight bend in the knee, we want to reach our hands forward while we're bringing our torso as close to parallel to the ground as possible and then also bringing up the other leg so our foot is going up towards the ceiling. The diver can then be progressed to a single leg deadlift. We're still working on balance, but we've increased the challenge of the exercise by including a kettlebell or a dumbbell for some external load. We can hold the weight in either hand. If we hold on the same side, it's a little bit easier because if we hold on the opposite side of our stance leg, there's a little bit of a rotational component for stability, which will just make the exercise a little bit more challenging. And then the final stage is plyometric exercises. And this stage is technically optional and it really depends on what we're trying to return back to. If we're trying to return back to sport, so if we want to run, basketball, volleyball, weightlifting, anything like that where the tendon is going to be exposed to explosive quick loading, then we want to make sure it's able to tolerate it with some plyometric exercises. Pogos are a great plyometric exercise because they start to load the tendon through a small range of motion. They also mimic what the loads are when we're looking at something like running. And so we can start with a double leg pogo, but then progress to a single leg pogo which is much more similar to the running loads. If we need to build more explosive power to return back to jumping for either basketball or volleyball, for example, we can use a kettlebell swing. And the way to think about the kettlebell swing is it's actually the hip hinge that we use for the banded pull through, but now we're doing it through a much faster range of motion. So hopefully this video on strengthening exercises for proximal hamstring tendinopathy was helpful. I think the big thing to know is that there's a bunch of different exercises that can be used for proximal hamstring tendinopathy. Some are better tolerated than others, and so we want to find which ones are better tolerated and then gradually build up from there. In general, most tendon programs are at least 12 weeks, so when we're looking at building a rehab program for proximal hamstring tendinopathy, we should expect to spend at least 12 weeks completing the program.